So for number 31, we're given this integral and we have to kind of reverse engineer it um, and describe the, the solid of our evolution. So this does have a dy, so we know, we know that we're summing these, um, these shells across the y-axis, and so, um, or we're summing them up vertically, right? So I've gone ahead and I've drawn this um, generic situation where we have a curve f of y, and it gets revolved about the curve y is equal to a. And the reason that I put this y is equal to, to a is because of this guy right here. Um, and so generally speaking, um, when we have, when we revolve a curve about a horizontal axis, it goes 2 pi y times f of y dy. So it appears that um, f of y is going to be this guy right here, dy is going to be, well, obviously dy, and then we have 2 pi accounted for. So instead of y, we're going to get 3 minus y. This means that the um, this axis of revolution, it was shifted, right? So let's just think about how we're going to represent that. Um, and so if we revolve this curve around the line y is equal to a, that's just a generic line, what is going to end up, what's going to happen is we're going to end up um, with a bunch of these cylinders. So they get revolved like this, like that, and then we add them up um, vertically, right? I'm just going to remove that so it does not get too crowded. Um, and so our volume is going to be, if we think about that cylinder as an infinitely thin sheet of paper that gets wrapped around the line y is equal to a, this does have an area, right? And it's as an area as a function of y, because as we just saw it, um, when I move up, that's going to give me smaller and smaller cylinders. And when I move down, that's going to give me bigger cylinders. So definitely changes as a function of y. So our volume is going to be the sum um, from a to b, right? From, from whatever point to whatever, um, of a, y, d, y. So we just have to think about how we're going to sum up all these areas to get a volume. Um, and what's missing is we need to be able to describe this area here as a function of y. So um, the area is just base times height, right? Because it's, it's a rectangle. And so the base here is going to be this length, right? And as we can see, this length is just wherever it touches the curve f, is f of y, right? So for example, if I were lower, it would touch the curve f of y, and then that would be the length that gets, uh, that gets revolved, right? So we can see here that that base is just wherever it touches the curve f of y, and so this is just f of y. Um, and now let's think about this, this height. Well, the height is going to be given by this part over here, by the circumference of our cylinder, right? Because we think of cutting open that cylinder and unwrapping it to form a sheet. Um, and so any cylinder, the circumference is given by 2 pi r, but this r is no good to us because we're integrating with respect to y. So we do need to express it as a function of y. So let's think about how we're going to express this, um, this radius here. Well, the radius, um, the radius goes from the point a all the way down here. So how can we describe this orange arrow, right? Well, think of this orange L arrow as being the total length of A, that's A, minus the length of Y, correct? Because um, here's just wherever I'm at on my Y axis. However, it's measured from zero uh, to up. So for example, if, that, that, um, if this line here is at two, we would measure two from zero to upwards, right? Zero to two. So to get that orange line, we're going to have to go the whole height A and subtract the little height Y um, to get that orange arrow. So that orange, uh, once more, that it's just A minus wherever I'm at on my Y axis. And so we can see here that this is just going to be um, two pi, right? Because it's a circumference times um, A minus y. And so our a y is going to be base times height, right? So 2 pi times a minus y times f of y. So once we have this, um, we can, we're going to move this, actually, I'm going to have to delete this. Um, and we're going to move this into our integral because we're just summing up our areas, right? Okay. So once we have this, we are just ready to compare here. Um, 
So we can see that a to b is going to go from 0 to 1. Um, <clears throat> and a minus y, it is equivalent to this 3 minus y, right? We can see by comparing it that a is equal to 3. So actually what is happening here is that we're taking this curve 1 minus y squared and we're revolving it around the line um, a is equal to 3, or in this case, y is equal to 3, right? And that's how, when we compare it, that's the solid that we get. So, <clears throat> let me just erase some of this so it doesn't get too crowded. Um, so, doing a direct comparison, we have 2 pi is equivalent to 2 pi, right? Um, actually, I'm going to do that in a different color. So, that's 2 pi, that's equivalent. Um, we can see here that... Oops, I'm missing a d y. We can see here that a is equivalent to 3, right? And lastly, um, f of y is going to be equivalent to 1 minus y squared. And so our conclusion is that um, the solid, the solid um, created, sorry, um, created, let me improve this. Solid is created by revolving the curve x is equal to 1 minus y squared about the line um, y is equal to 3 from 0, from 0 to 1. Um, and that's that's what we get.